Well, good morning. Man, time to wake up. That rain came out. I know people wanted to sit on the, on the edge of their house and drink a little coffee, stay in bed. That rain was nice, wasn't it? We enjoy these temperatures right here. It's a blessing from the Lord to get something like that. What I'm excited about, because I have felt the rain of his presence in this house today. Come in. Amen. Matter of fact, let's just put our hands together for Jesus. That's all it's about right there. I don't know about you, but he's done a lot in my life. And my hands put together and my hands lifted will never repay for what he did for me. He'll never repay for what he did for you. So when we come into his house, man, give it all you got in worship. Give every bit of it. Amen. Well, I'm glad you're here. Good to see you today. I'm going to start out with telling you a story with the life, the live full and die empty. So a few years ago, us, the director team, we jumped in that brown van out there that, that the church has. And we headed to Branson, Missouri. And so it was for a director's trip. And so that morning, we all showed up here. It wasn't too early. It was probably around 8-ish. We all showed up, and, and we were fully gassed up, and the luggage was in the trailer, and we were loading it up, and the trailer was secure. We made, was making sure that nobody would have to call us and say, hey, there goes your trailer, right? So it was all secure. And the team was in the van, and we were all ready to go. So we headed down I-44, that great turnpike, smooth sailing, right? If you've been down that turnpike, what are they doing? Sorry if you're watching this, you're from Oklahoma, but what are you doing? You keep charging me to pay your, and you're not even, fit. anyway, that's another sermon for another day. Oh, geez, get me all wound up about that. This is I-44. <laughs> I have ba shaking baby syndrome before it's over, right? So we're in the van, and we're heading up 44, and everybody's kind of doing their thing. And so we get to past Oklahoma City, and we're, I think we're almost past Tulsa, and and people, we started saying, hey, we're hungry. So me being the driver, because I always drive. I'm just the driver, I always do. I don't trust other people's driving. There's a reason. But that's another sermon. Anyway, so I drive, not because I like to be in control. But, you know, anyway. Um, so we're driving down 44, and people are like, hey, we're getting hungry. And I was like, okay, cool. And I knew a few miles ahead of us, there was a McDonald's that went across the interstate. Anybody ever seen that? It goes across the interstate, and there's a gas station there. So why not make it the best of both worlds, right? A pit stop there. Nobody was getting hangry at me, right? They weren't getting upset, throwing things. And so I was like, let's do it. So I checked the gas gauge, and we're at a quarter of a tank. Plenty. We got about five miles to go. We're plenty of gas to get there. So we're trucking along. Everything's smooth. And all of a sudden... The gas gauge runs down past empty pa faster than somebody, a NASCAR driver trying to cross the finish line. Some of you, maybe you're not NASCAR fans. How about this one? It was faster than a, you get into a hot and ready pizza at Little Caesars when they put the sign on, right? Maybe that's not you. Maybe it's me like a fat guy like me. When I see Krispy Kreme donuts and the hot and fresh comes on, I'm there, right? That's how fast that gas gauge went to empty. It started sputtering and puttering. Mm -hmm. Pastor John looked at me and said, don't fool with me. I was like, I ain't fooling with you. So I pulled it. We just kept coasting. I put that baby in neutral, and we just cruised as far as we could. And all of a sudden, we came to a stop. The only thing in our sight was fields, cows, cow manure, repeat again. There was no exits. There was no gas stations. There was no turnarounds. We were out of gas. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6, it says, For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Father, we thank you for your word today. Your word is life and we thank you for it. We pray today that your word would enter into our heart and change our lives and we would walk out of here different than when we came. We would apply it and we would help change this world for your glory. Father, prepare our hearts and the seed that's going in that it would bring forth a harvest. In Jesus' name, amen. 
So let me ask a question of this. Is there anybody in here that when your gas, can, gas tank, your hand, your gas hand gets past, a little past uh, uh, maybe half a tank, you get a little stressed out, you pull and get gas. Anybody like that? A few people in here. Okay. Is there anybody in here that when it gets to E and it's a little past an E, that quarter of a tank, it's a little past, you, you, you like, oh, I got to go. Anybody like that? You got involuntary sweats going on. You're like, let me get here to get gas, right? Is there anybody that's here that says, man, um, when it gets to E, I get challenged. How far can this baby go, right? Uh, yeah? Anybody? Yeah? Come on, show me some hands. Anybody like that? Join in with me. I'm like, I can get this many miles out of that gallon, and it's going like that, right? Okay, let's be honest. How many people have ran out of gas in here? What is wrong with you and me? There's a gas gauge on there. Why am I running out of gas? It's a little thing. It goes ding, ding, ding. Some of your cars go out of gas, out of gas. Two miles, two miles, right? And we run out of gas. How do we do that? When you run out of gas, did you say that stupid car? I can't believe that dumb car ran out of gas. You get all mad at it, get out and kick it. I'm so mad at that car. Is that how you treat that car? Do you blame the car for it running out of gas? Do you get out of your car and just walk away and go, you know what, that's a, that's, that's just a horrible car bringing out of gas. You walk away and tell your wife, I'm going to go get another one. Does that happen? No, it doesn't happen. Why? Because it still has potential. That car still has, even though it's out of gas, it has the tires, it has the engine, it just doesn't have the gas. It ran out of what powers it. So it's just like in our lives. If you accepted Jesus Christ in your life, you still have the potential inside of you. But when the cares of this world come, it tries to drain the power from the inside of you. But here's what you got to understand today. But what's inside of you will not run out of power. The power doesn't come from you. It comes from who is inside of you. Some of you need to hear that today. You feel like you're running on empty, but Jesus Christ is inside of you. And he's the one that powers your journey and your race. 1 Peter 4 and 4 says, because the one who is greater than, than the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. I'm excited today, so my, my words may get jumbled, but he is greater that's inside of you. The one that's inside of you, you don't have to run on empty no more. We have to identify it. We got to recognize it. We got to pay attention to it, and we got to understand he is inside of you. He lacks nothing. He needs nothing. He doesn't want nothing. What he knows is he knows and he sees your potential. He will give you power in your potential. He will give you power in your purpose to run your race. We have to be willing as followers of Christ to live in his fullness and die completely empty. We have to be willing as followers of Christ to live in his fullness and pour out everything that's inside of us. We have to, be in, we have to live in his fullness and empty out ourselves for his glory and his will. So for the next few minutes together, we're going to talk. We're going to take a journey together and talk about how to live full and die empty. So the first way, how to live full and die empty, the first way is this. We must want to be full of his presence and empty of ourselves. We must want to be full of his presence and empty of ourselves. He said, Paul said it right there. He said, I have fought the good fight. He used those words specifically because Paul understood to be full of his presence doesn't come easy. Paul understood that to be full of God's presence doesn't come easy. You need to recognize it doesn't come easy. You're going to have to fight a fight. There's days that you don't want to get up. There's a days you don't want to crack open your Bible. There's days you don't want to speak the glory of the Lord. You want to speak some other glories, right? Let's just be real today. To, we've got to empty ourselves. And he understood emptying our, his self didn't come easy. Emptying ourselves doesn't come easy. To get out of our own way and out, out of our own will, it doesn't come easy. Do you know the devil will use any distractions he can to get you out of the presence of God? I'm not just talking about temptations, and I'm not just talking about sin. I'm talking about the busyness of life. He will get that to distract you. The devil will do whatever he can to get your focus on stuff. His entire tactic from the beginning of time with Adam and Eve in the garden was to get them out of the presence of the most holy God. 
He wants to separate you from not experiencing everything that God has for you. But God sees your purpose and potential. He knows what's inside of you. Jesus even warns us in Matthew chapter 6. He warns us. He tells us. He said, but Matthew 6, 33 says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough troubles of its own. Here's the thing. We must be so much in love with God that our desire is to be in his presence. When you're, you're desiring so much in love with him and your desire to be in his presence, when that happens, you'll be so in love with him that sin won't be appealing anymore. You won't try to toe the line of how close can I get to sin and how close can I keep to Jesus. You'll let go of the one and grab the other because you're so in love with him that you know he has a purpose for you and your potential. We don't need to be concerned with tomorrow. You say, well, that's crazy planning. We don't plan. Don't be concerned with it. I didn't say don't plan. Don't be engulfed with it. Well, tomorrow I've got to do this. Tomorrow I've got to do that. Well, this is going to happen tomorrow. That's going to happen tomorrow. It doesn't matter. Seek his kingdom and he'll take care of everything. How do we live full and die empty? The second thing is this. We live to our fullest purpose and empty out all of our potential. We live to our fullest purpose and empty out all of our potential. I need somebody to hear this to me today. Hear this, what I'm saying to you today. This is, this is you, you didn't show up here on accident. If you notice all the, everything that's been said to this point, God's talking to somebody. He wants you to understand we got to live our fullest purpose and empty out all of our potential. Don't you dare, don't you dare, don't you dare die with greatness inside of you. Don't you dare die with greatness inside of you. You have greatness inside of you because God placed it there. And don't you, die, don't you dare go to the grave dying with greatness inside of you. 2 Timothy 4 and 7, he said, I have finished the race. See, Paul understood. He understood because he fought hard. He fought really, really hard is what he did. And he poured out all of his potential. He didn't leave anything on the table. He was all in. We've got to be all in for God's purpose and his plan in our life. You know, it's said that the cemetery is the wealthiest place on this earth because it is full of unfulfilled potential and dreams. The wealthiest place on this earth, full of unfulfilled potential and dreams. Businesses have never been started. Books have never been read. Books have never been written. Ministries that have never gone anywhere because it died with them there. One of the most dangerous words, one of the most dangerous words is the word almost. I almost did this. I almost did that. I was going to. I was going to do this. I was going to do that. That word almost will kill the potential that is inside of you. It will kill the potential that is inside of you. The almost that you tolerate in your life, you authorize to exist in your life. I'm going to say it one more time for you because I, I want you to get what I'm saying. I want you to hear what I'm saying. The almost that you tolerate in your life, you authorize to exist in your life. You're giving it to the authority. The what ifs, you're giving the authority. I was going to, you're giving it the authority to exist in your life. And you don't need to because you've got a God inside of you that understands what he's put inside of you. But here's what you got to know. If you don't challenge it, it's not going to change. We settle for the almost of life, the going to's. We settle for, for what people say. We settle for the, what has happened to us and what's happening to us. 
We settle for those things. We've got to get free and not settle for the almost in our life. No longer. I want you to hear me when I tell you today, what people think about you fails to compare to what God knows about you. Someone needs to break free of this. What people think about you fails to compare to what God knows about you. What God knows about you is your purpose and your potential. That's what God knows about you. God knows about you, the dreams he's placed inside of you. See, Ephesians 3 tells us now to him who is, in, is able to do immeasurable more than all we can ask or imagine. There is, not, a, there is not, a, not an ingredient cup. There is not a measuring tape. There is nothing. There is not an imagination you have. God said, I can do immeasurable more than you can imagine or you can ask for. God wants to do it for you. He's telling you he can do it for you. You just got to let him do it and rise up to your purpose and potential you have in he has in you. See, it says, according to his power that is in work within us. The power is there. Your dreams, they're there. He placed them there. The dreams, your potential, your purpose, it's all right there. And guess what? He knows it. And he said, I'm going to put the power inside of them to make it happen. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. You start living in your potential and we are his bride. The church is his bride. And, and it gets elevated a little bit more because it's like, look what people are living in their potential. People are living their purpose. Man, they're dreaming. God's doing things in their life. And it elevates us. It's according to his power that it is at work within you. God created you with purpose and potential. He's not waiting to do it. He did it. He's not waiting to put greatness inside of you. He did it. He's not waiting to put purpose inside of you. He did it. The moment you were born, purpose and potential came alive. Whenever you were born, purpose and potential came alive. When you took that first breath coming out of your mama, <gasps> potential was there. Purpose was there. It was there. Some of you may have been smacked by the doctor, but it's there. So many times we wait on things to be right, on circumstances. We wait on people to do this or people to do that. But as day by day goes by, we start settling for the almost. We start settling for the what ifs. And we stop dreaming. We have to have a revelation that what you do today determines where you'll be tomorrow. You say, I've heard that and I heard that. Get it. <laughs> Even more than that, here's what I want to tell you. Your future is not ahead of you. Your future is not ahead of you. It is released day by day. So many of us are looking five years from now, 10 years, what are we going to be doing? Live right now because it's being your future, your purpose is re being released day by day. Yeah. Every day what I do now is preparing me for tomorrow. That's why I don't have to worry about tomorrow because I did something today to prepare me for tomorrow. Yeah. If you'll get it close to Jesus today, guess what? You'll fall in love with him today. Don't worry about tomorrow. He's got it all planned out. Yeah. How to live full and die empty. The third way is this, we live full of faith and empty out of our overflow. We live full of faith and we empty out of our overflow. See, I, I'm sure there was many times that Paul wanted to give up. I'm sure there was. The dude had been beat up, he had been chained up, he had been imprisoned. He had been bit by a snake. He had been shipped. Man, that dude, you thought, oh, I got a mean tweet. You thought you had it rough. <laughs> Matter of fact, he gives us a glimpse of 2 Corinthians. In 2 Corinthians, he gives us a glimpse of how he feels. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9, it says, We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. 
perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. His faith had to rise above his circumstances. Our faith has to rise above our circumstances. We have to walk in faith, not in circumstances. Do you know your emotions will fool you? Because one day I'm excited, the next day I want to kill somebody. One day I'm cruising along, you cut me off, and then I'm running over you when I run out of gas. But Hebrews chapter 11, one and verses 1 and 6, it says, Now faith is confidence. Do you hear that? Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Sometimes you're not going to be able to see it, but you got to keep the faith. Sometimes you're not going to feel it, but you got to step out in faith. You got to take a step into your purpose and pull out your potential. You've got to do that day by day. You're going to be pressed. It's not a lie. This Christian walk ain't easy. It's easy to be a sinner because you ain't got nothing to do. You can do everything. But when I have a life for Christ, I'm choosing to fall in love with him and not do what sin tells me to do. You're going to be pressed on every side. You're going to be perplexed. There's sometimes I just shake my head and go, what in the world did I do? You're going to be persecuted. You might even be struck down. But you will not, will not, will not be destroyed. You got to give it your all. Don't you back down. Don't you lay down. Don't you settle and don't you give up. Don't you settle for the almost. You walk in the full potential that God has for you in your life. Because in him, he'll give you the power of the Holy Spirit. And you can travel through this Christian life. And you can run your race. And you can finish it well. Yeah. Hebrews 6 says, And that he rewards those who earnestly, earnestly seek him. As you're seeking him, he rewards you. As he begins to reward you, guess what happens? As he begins to give you things and work inside of you, guess what happens? There's an overflow that happens. When you become starting working in the overflow, the purpose and the potential, the dreams and the godly desires that's inside of you, you begin to overflow out of it what's inside of you and other people are blessed. Have you ever been around somebody that you go, man, they got a connection with Jesus? I just know they're connected to Jesus. They, they got a line straight to heaven. I don't know if it's a cell phone or I don't know how to, but they, they been, they don't have to tell you. You just feel it. You can experience. You know that they got it. See, when you begin overflowing, others will be blessed. They will feel the same way about you because that overflow, what's inside of you is coming out. He said, 2 Timothy 4 and 8, it says, Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only me, listen to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. You have longed for his appearing. You have longed for it. He's going to reward you. The day when we stand before him, the King of kings and Lord of lords, the only thing is he's not going to say, well, you did this and you did that. What he's going to say is, well done. That's what we all want to hear. Today, you've got to begin deciding that I will no longer live a life with regrets. I will no, long, no longer live a life with almost and what ifs. I no longer... I'm going to live a life with I was going to. Give it all you got. Defy the odds that's been spoken over your life. And maybe sometimes you've spoken it over your own life. Defy it because the purpose and potential is inside of you because Christ has given you the power. As I began today, I was telling you about a trip. And I was telling you about how we ran out of gas. I had enough gas I felt because it was a quarter of a tank. There was enough. But what I didn't account for was the heaviness of the luggage and baggage that was inside the trailer. 
we put it in there. We knew it was in there, but I didn't account for the heaviness of it. I didn't account for the resistance of the trailer as we go up hills as it would pull against my vehicle and make me use more gas to get up the hill. Sometimes, it, although I could see the trailer in my mirror and I could see it out the, the side mirrors, I could see it. Sometimes it would push us and sometimes it would pull against us. I didn't take an account for my friends who were riding with me, the weight that they had inside that van. Some of them were napping, some of them were chatting, some of them were just hanging out. But none of them were concerned about the gas gauge. I didn't take an account for the natural hills that we would go up and down, the ups and downs, the winds that would push us either direction. I didn't take an account for that. Just like I didn't take an account for the things that would keep us from our full potential and getting to our destination. Today, do you need to look at the hidden luggage that's in your life? Whether it's yours or someone's else, it could be what's weighting you down. Today, do you need to look at that trailer? Maybe you've been pulling along something that you shouldn't be pulling along, bringing with you and keeping it around just because. Today, maybe you need to look at the friends that you're, you're carrying with you, the weight. They're weighting you down from carrying out your full potential living out for Christ how you should. And I'm not just saying people you shouldn't be with. Sometimes there's Christian folks that you shouldn't be with. <laughs> Today, do you need to look at those natural hills like your jobs or the places you go, the voices you listen to? But you know you shouldn't. See, many times we, 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 we know stay away from sin, but sometimes there's a crowd of people that we need to not listen to. So during that, when we finally got to a full stop on the side of the shoulder, Pastor John and I walked, and we walked, and we walked, and we crossed barbed wire fences. We walked through the field. We dodged the manure. We walked to two different stations to get what we needed. We had some cuts and we had some scrapes as we were coming back. There may have been a tear or two, <laughs> but we knew we had to do it to get us traveling back onto our destination, to get our van the power it needed to move in its purpose it was created for and to get it, its best potential out of it, it needed gas. Today, today, maybe you need to evaluate. You need to look at and evaluate, are you living full for Christ? And when that day comes, can you say, I gave it my all. I emptied out everything you placed inside of me, Jesus. But don't you dare die with one ounce of greatness inside of you. The potential is there. Your purpose is there. He's got the power to make it happen. With every head bowed and every eye closed. Maybe today you haven't been living to your full potential. Maybe the cares of the world has distracted you and you're ready to say no more almost in my life. No more what ifs in my life. No more I was going to's in my life. No more anything except fully devoted to him. Maybe today I want, you're saying I want to live here to my fullest, but I want to empty out all God has given me in my life. At the end of my life, I want to hear well done. If that's you today, I just want to pray with you. If you want to lift your hand. I want to see who I'm praying with today. You, I want God to fill me up. I'm going to live to my fullest potential. Father, you see all those hands. I'm asking right now that you just begin to work in them. 
you would get all the voices out. You would remove all the distractions out. You would take the enemy and move that distraction out. No longer the voices, that they understand whatever's been spoken over them, whatever they're carrying with them, whatever they're pulling along with them. Father, they would understand right now, today, that you have purpose and potential in their life, and they're not going to die with greatness inside of you. They're going to live every moment of every day, this time that we have that we can't get back, living fully for you. And at the end of everything, no matter what anybody on this earth says, we want to look you face to face, eye to eye. And you say to us, well done, my good and faithful servant. Maybe today with every head bowed and every eye closed, maybe today you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Today you say, today I would like to give my heart to Jesus. I would like to accept him into my life. I'd like to receive him there. You don't know if you live to, if you leave today where you would end up. If you would end up in heaven or hell, well, today is the day of salvation. If today you'd like to give your life to Jesus Christ, I want you to just lift your hand up. We want to pray with you today. Is there anyone that says, I want to give my heart to Jesus today? Any hands? I see one hand. Is there anyone else that says, I want to give my heart to Jesus today? Come on, two hands. Is there anybody else that says, I want to give? I see three hands. Amen. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. He has got full purpose and potential inside of you. Come on, put your hands together for those three individuals. I want to say to you that raised your hand today, welcome to the family of Christ. Welcome to G- with a Jesus, his, your Savior and your Lord. Today we're going to pray together. We're going to pray together. So repeat after me. Say, Dear Jesus, I invite you into my heart, into my life. Please forgive me for all my sins and all my ways. I repent and ask you to be the Lord and Savior of my life. Amen. Give Jesus some praise today. We are so happy that you joined us today. Here at Compassion, we value family, which means we value you. If there's any way that we can be praying for you and believing with you for something, please make sure that you let us know. You guys have a great week, and we'll see you here next Sunday.